We start the next session. I would request all the one-minute poster presenters to come forward and occupy seats in the front row uh, before the tribute video in the next session starts. Uh, it would I would be grateful if you could do that. And the next session we are having is a very special session, which is a tribute to Professor Prakash Shetty, one of the most distinguished nutrition scientists and a friend and colleague of many people sitting in the audience. Uh, I would request uh, Jeff Wedge to uh, come to the dais and chair the, this special session uh, in honor of the memory of Professor Prakash Shetty. Thank you, Varti. Between our last meeting in Accra last year and this Academy Week, we lost one of our research community who is very special to us, Prakash Shetty. Prakash was very much at the center of agriculture, nutrition, and health activity. Most recently, many of you will know through his leadership of the program uh, Leveraging Agriculture for Nutrition in South Asia, or LANSA. So we've now brought together today um, some of Prakash's colleagues to reflect on the contribution that he's made and give their personal thoughts of, on Prakash. For those of you who know him, we hope this will be an opportunity to remember and honor our dear colleague. Um, for those of you who don't, and particularly from some of the uh, younger members of our community here, perhaps this is an opportunity to reflect on what human properties uh, contribute best to success in our challenging interdisciplinary uh, properties such as uh, curiosity, enthusiasm, and humility, which were so clearly exemplified in this special man. So I'd like to invite my colleagues up here who are going to um, uh, say some words about Prakash. Um, uh, Raghu uh, Pandijat from the National Center for Biological Sciences in Bangalore. Uh, could you come up and, and grab a seat? Um, Anura Karpad from St. John's Research Institute in Bangalore. Alan Dangor from the London School of Hygiene Tropical Medicine. And R.V. Bhavani from the M.S. Swaminathan uh, Research Foundation. Good morning, everyone. Uh, delighted to be here at this particular event. Um, I first met Professor Prakash Shetty in 1986 when I arrived at St. John's Medical College as an undergraduate medical student. At the time, he was already the professor of physiology and the head of department. And to many of our students, he was a uh, impressive, although somewhat intimidating figure. A few months into the year, he showed up to teach us to the physiology of the endocrine system. Uh, I recall him announcing very soon after he came to the first class that he would not teach course material as such. This would be available in Guyton's textbook of physiology. And he suggested that we all listen to him rather than busy ourselves with that most noble of student professions, which is to take notes in class. While teaching physiology, he spent most of the lecture not laying out the facts, but rather explaining to us how these insights had been arrived at. That is the process of discovery from the unknown to the known, which we refer to as research. To me personally, as an undergraduate, first year undergraduate medical student, listening to him was a moment of realization, as I had never heard this concept earlier. Since it seemed an interesting activity, I approached him uh, with some trepidation later. And after some discussions, 
uh, he generously offered that I could try my hand at it in his lab. This was a huge opportunity for me. The atmosphere that he had created in the department more generally, and his lab in particular, was very exciting and enjoyable, with a team of very talented PhD students, including uh, Anura, who will speak after me. The next five years were very enjoyable. I spent most of my time after classes in the lab, and this led to my decision to pursue a full-time career as a scientist rather than to pursue a career in clinical medicine. There are many ways that one can mentor a person. Uh, one can train them technically. One can introduce them to other relevant colleagues, point them to opportunities, and help them to get a job, and so on. Each of these are important in their own right and can be very impactful. But perhaps the most impactful thing is the ability to be able to allow a person to discover their own interests so that they can then take their careers forward with a great deal of enthusiasm. Dr. Shetty did this for me, and I am deeply grateful to him for this. I should say that I was not the only beneficiary of such, um, uh, of this particular aspect of, his, uh, of him. There were several medical students uh, at St. John's Medical College who equivalently benefited from the atmosphere he had created in the Department of Physiology. And indeed, it was not only students from St. John's Medical College, but also from institutions beyond that came to the Department of Physiology and then to science through his immensely influential personality. We then went our individual ways, Dr. Shetty to the school in London and then on to Rome, and I went off to pursue a career on something quite different, which is cell and molecular biology. We were in touch intermittently and over the last two years, once again, in, engaged in discussions on aspects of science and life. These discussions were often at his home in Amisham and then in London that he and his family shared most generously with colleagues, hosting us on multiple occasions. He pointed out that he understood very little of the technical details of what I did, but our discussions generally uh, centered around the principles of doing science, how to conduct a life in science, and what was the most appropriate thing to do given the circumstances that one may find oneself in a career in science. Starting with the initial opportunity that he offered me in his lab, I've been engaged in scientific research for more than 30 years. During this time, I've had various mentors who've contributed in different ways to my career. However, it was Professor Shetty who introduced me to the joys of scientific research, transformed my life, and helped to guide it at its very initial and early stages. As I mentioned, I'm not the only one who's benefited in this manner from having interacted with him. I speak here on behalf of many individuals who cannot be here, but are equally grateful uh, for his contributions to their life. So we remember him today and carry forward this aspect of his work as a mentor in our own domains of existence and into the future, which I think would be the best way that we could pay a tribute uh, to his life and work. Thank you. Good morning, and uh, uh, I'm really pleased to be here to speak uh, about Prakash Shetty. Uh, I consider myself one of his oldest uh, sons, um, and uh, I met him when I was, uh, my first meeting with him was not uh, very auspicious, I suppose. I was a very arrogant medical student and thought I knew more physiology than he did. And he put me in my place. And uh, I thought he never liked me. But uh, as I went through medicine, I ran out of money to pay my fees. So I was broke. And uh, this man, uh, heard about that, and he actually found me when I was trying to find a job washing test tubes in the hospital laboratory. And he said uh, he could offer me a job. And more importantly, he would offer me a job that paid me all the money in advance so I could pay fees. And that was important. And I said, great, and I'll take it, and thank you very much. And uh, he said, follow me. 
and we went and, uh, into the lab, and uh, he opened a very large freezer, and it was just packed with uh, fecal samples. I mean, I'm talking about the whole fecal sample, uh, all frozen. And he said, be careful, because if one of those falls on your head, it could kill you. Uh, fecal samples were about a quarter kilo each. So uh, it was, uh, with some trepidation, I looked at it, but the money was just too good. So I said, all right, I'll join, and I joined him. And it was really fun, because initially I did this, and we had to gown up, and we looked like we were doing surgery, because we wore complete gowns and gloves and masks. And uh, he would come in, and all, for all those gowning and so on, we had these buckets in which we actually thawed the sample and then stirred it with some distilled water to homogenize it. And he would always, whenever he was free, he would gown up and come in and stand with me while we did this, thousands of samples. And I, I suppose, you know, s gazing into those swirling brown depths, you begin to get very philosophical and you think about things. And we did think a lot and we talked and, and eventually when I finished medicine, uh, I used to do this in my spare time. When I finished medicine, um, I, 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 he, he knew I had loans to pay. So he again came up with his generosity and offered me a job as a tutor in physiology. These were well-paid jobs for the time. And I jumped at it again and uh, continued to look at those brown swirling depths. And uh, uh, I, I slowly, and his curiosity and his humility, when he stood with me doing this, you have to talk, right? You can't just stare at, at a fecal sample. <laughs> it, it encourages you to think about other things. And uh, so we did, and we talked a lot, and eventually I did uh, uh, join him in, in some research, and we went on. And as I said, I like to think I was uh, one of his first, uh, his first sons. In fact, we had a sign in the calorie meter that we built at St. John's, which said Prakash Shetty and Sons, uh, purveyors of calorie metric equipment. And uh, he, he loved that sign. Now, uh, Prakash, of course, I mean, uh, I have to tell you, uh, he's been such an integral part of my life, and I haven't yet got over his death. I, I miss him deeply even now, and I, I, I do want to extend my condolences to his wife, Nandini, and his children, Dushyant and Meghna, and their spouses and their children as well. So uh, I, I do want to put that up right in the beginning. Prakash was an ex excellent student by himself. As a medical student in the Christian Medical College in Velo, he was really seen to be a superior intellect. And one of his classmates, Abraham Joseph, met me after his death, after his death and, 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 and said that Prakash was an outstanding student. He was a top gold medalist in, in his class, and he was widely respected by his classmates. He came soon after he finished from Velo to St. John's. I, this is well before my time. But he began to think very hard about nutrition. And one of the big problems then was that, for him, was that uh, the FAO was suggesting that uh, uh, people could live on, a smaller person could live on progressively lower and lower intakes of energy through a process of adaptation. And for him, he, 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 he took this as a personal, almost a personal insult. He used to get quite annoyed about it, and he eventually began to study adaptation in energy expenditure. And those studies led him to go to Cambridge eventually, on a Nehru scholarship where he worked with Philip James. And there he worked on thermogenesis. And I, I, I was lucky in that I spent time with Philip James myself. And Philip would, would say that when he met Prakash, he met him first uh, at a railway station in King's Cross, I think. And uh, uh, Prakash was so uh, uh, was taken up with his, with his other interests that he asked him that he would like to speak to I think it was the Royal Geographical Society in London to uh, give a talk about ancient temples in India. Prakash used to, used to, he used to go to these old libraries in Bangalore which had uh, what the British Raj had produced as what they called gazetteers. Now gazetteers at the time were very beautifully written, extensive uh, documentations of 
everything about districts in, in, in a state, and it would describe temples. And he would actually then list those temples and then go out on expeditions to discover those temples. Some of those temples had gone and become overgrown, so you couldn't even find them. But he would actually go with one aim, and that was that he wanted to photograph the, the, the statues in the temple to see how those sculptors represented disease in those days. So he was able to, in fact, uh, photograph uh, a, a statue that represented an encephaly, which uh, uh, was, was fascinating. And he would talk to me about it and show me these pictures after disappearing on his expedition. He never took me on any one of them. But he would go and then come back after a week and uh, triumphantly show me pictures. He had built up a very nice lecture with that, and he wanted to lecture to the Royal Society on that. I'm not sure if he ever did, whether Philip James uh, got him a thing. But one of his uh, uh, students called Shiv Pillai, who is in America now, were, wrote to me to say that you know, one could learn from Prakash about the intricacies of brown adipose tissue and fat metabolism, discuss circadian rhythms and the biology of bats, and perhaps receive an exposition on medicine in ancient India based on his remarkable photographic records of temple sculptures and murals. That was the man. Now, just another small story, if I may. And um, he came back from Cambridge, and that's when I was a medical student. And he took up his uh, physiology professorship at St. John's. And uh, when I, that's when I joined him, and we had great fun. We had a decrepit lab. We had no money, no grants. Well, we had a small grant of 15,000 rupees from the Bombay Hospital Trust, and that was it. And that helped us buy that little homogenizer that we used to put into the buckets. But just that, and getting some very uh, willing volunteers to do their thing in bags and give it to us, which we could then homogenize. That was basically the kind of thing we did, and we worked on fiber. But eventually, he got a grant from the Wellcome Trust, which allowed him to build a calorimeter in India. Now, while we were building that, remember, it was a decrepit old lab, and we had to kind of do what we could to build what we could. And uh, sometimes rodents would find their way into our rats, would find their way into our labs. And rats were terrible for calorimeters. I'm sure they're terrible for all of you but they were particularly terrible for us because we were short of money and we couldn't replace chewed up wires. And uh, Prakash would get very excited with this and the little stick he would go and dive under the benches and uh, you know, he'd be shouting and it would be fun. All of us would be doing it. It was great because the boss was doing it. And sometimes visitors to the lab would come and say, oh, where is Professor Prakash Shetty? And we'd point to his bottom that was protruding out from under a bench and it would be wiggling around and some, some bit of shouting going on. And we say, that's the boss. And uh, then he'd, he'd then come out. And it's, a, it's remarkable. He could actually then, his dignity was so good. There he was, you know, trying to get the rodent, not succeeding. And he'd come out all dusty and full of, you know, hair all over the place. But then it was, I'm the boss. And everyone knew it. And most of those visitors later would tell me, what a fantastic boss you have. And I say, yes, that's true. You know, we, we can just uh, be what we are with him. So uh, that's, to me, the man. He was, he was everything to us. He was right from the bottom of the pyramid to the top of the pyramid. He could take on different roles. And more importantly, he, he made us engage a lot with, uh, with different uh, aspects of, of science. And when he left uh, St. John's, it was a big blow. Um, I, I, I myself wanted to leave, with, leave St. John's myself because to me, St. John's was Prakash Shetty. And uh, he told me, stay back. It doesn't matter. You, you have to give your all. And uh, I, I will not tell you what all uh, the philosophy of life that he gave me, but it was something that truly made me uh, stay because when he left, the grant stopped. And it meant that I had to start all over again. But without his uh, strength, I don't think I could have ever done that. Now, um, I know he's, he, he went to the London School, and I know Alan has a lot to say about that. But uh, uh, at FAO, uh, he was remarkable, because I, I was working a lot on 
on requirements of energy and, pro and protein and amino acids. And what I saw was that although it was a WHO activity, at FAO Prakash, in his role there, uh, he literally directed the FAO to work in concert with the WHO, not only for the requirements, but also towards addressing the issue of the upcoming obesity and chronic disease epidemic and their link to diet and nutrition. And in fact, it resulted in a very influential document, a joint FAO-WHO uh, expert consultation on diet, nutrition, and the prevention of chronic diseases that came out in 2002. And he kept working with the FAO, even though he retired from there in 2005. He continued to emphasize the detrimental impact of obesity and non-communicable diseases in the developing world. And he worked very strongly with the Global Perspective Studies Unit at the FAO. So that's Prakash for me. He was a man with great, wide intellectual interests. My, my, my joys were after we finished de-gowning after stirring shit, as I used to tell him, I stirred shit for you. And uh, he, he would take me for a drink, as he called it. And of course, I'd get all excited about the drink, but a drink for Prakash was a drink of coffee, no more. And, but he'd take me out for that drink on his little scooter, and we'd, we'd go and sit on the steps uh, on the main road in Bangalore. There, there are some shops there with these steps, and we sit there late at night drinking coffee, talking about injustices in the world, which really, I think, shaped me. So that's Prakash. He had very wide intellectual interests, reading uh, far beyond the boundaries of nutrition and science. And he was really, to me, therefore, a Renaissance man, very knowledgeable about culture, literature, classical music, history, and food. Um, and as a colleague uh, of his wrote also to me later when he died, uh, that was Alan Jackson at the University of Southampton. He said, there are some lives that have a remarkable quality and luminosity that touches, helps, and enriches the world for others. I, I, I completely agree. And I stand here as an example of, of how, how that can happen. Now, that's the end of what I want to say, but I, I do want to also announce to you on behalf of the St. John's Research Institute, which is a part of the St. John's Medical College campus, um, that uh, Nandini Shetty made a very generous endowment to St. John's uh, to hold a public lecture called the Professor Prakash Shetty Public Lecture. It is an endowment that is held by the Division of Health and Humanities at the St. John's Research Institute. That division is headed by Professor Mario Vaz, yet another student of, Saint, of, of Prakash's who was lured into physiology even though he wanted to do uh, public health work with leprosy. Uh, that was Prakash. You know, leprosy was such a big problem. There was so much happening, yet there was this brilliant doctor who decided, no, I think physiology with Prakash Shetty is more interesting. That was the type of man he was. So uh, we, we do want to thank the family of Prakash Shetty, Nandini, Dushyant, and Meghna uh, for this generous endowment. And the first lecture will be held later this year. I do not know who's going to speak in that. St. John's has its own committee to decide. But uh, it will be put out, and I, I hope it will be uh, recorded and a video will be available for all of you to see. But thank you for listening to me, and thank you for this opportunity. I first met Prakash in 1993, when he came to the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Nutrition at the school at the time was in a state of some turmoil, and Prakash had been recruited from St. John's Medical College to take charge. Prakash recognized the need to change the focus of the group from clinical nutrition towards public health nutrition, and the shifts in emphasis was both timely and important. Uh, nearly 25 years later, public health nutrition uh, is more important than ever for global health, and building on Prakash's vision, uh, public health nutrition and training, extending now also into agriculture, of course, and planetary health, is stronger than ever at the school. 
It was nearly 20 years later, in 2012, that I finally got the chance to work directly with Prakash. I asked him if he would be willing to become the Chief Executive Officer of the Leveraging Agriculture for Nutrition in South Asia, or LANSA program. Bhavani will talk about his time at the LANSA program shortly, but let me just say that there was no one, uh, there, there could have been no one better than Prakash with his deep knowledge of the region his unquestionable status as a titan of nutrition and his unparalleled political dexterity to take on the task. On one memorable Lancer trip to Chennai a couple of years ago, Prakash invited, uh, invited me to join him at a classical Indian music concert around the corner from our research partner, the MS Swaminathan Research Foundation. Prakash had been staying at the foundation and had become a member of the local classical music organization and was a frequent concert goer. I was initially enthralled by the music and the helpful concert notes that Prakash whispered in my ear as the evening unfolded. I say initially, it, was, it had been quite a long day in the office. It was still quite warm. The air was heavy with the smell of jasmine and the rather large lady singing a surprisingly long devotional song was rhythmically smacking her ample thighs, sending out hypnotic waves that seemed to make the stage gently sway. Quite quickly, I was, of course, sound asleep, and Prakash kindly pretended not to notice, but coughed loudly as the concert drew to a close. I woke in a state uh, of deep embarrassment and stumbled out some words of how much I had really enjoyed the performance. And Prakash looked at me with a smile in his eyes and he said, I'm only sorry, Alan, he said, that this has been such a short concert. And he, <laughs> and he started gently giggling and then he said, normally the music continues for at least three hours and maybe you would have enjoyed that even more. Some of you may not know that I've also had the great pleasure of living with Prakash. Well, I say uh, living with Prakash, but it was actually living with his desk, a huge black wooden construction that Prakash had bought whilst working at St. John's. So why did, you, why did I have this desk, you, you may ask? Well, it, it went a little bit like this. Alan? Uh, hello, Prakash, how are you? Listen, I have my old desk from India, and I want to give it to you. Well, well, Prakash, that's incredibly kind. Let me just check with my wife. No, 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 exactly. Uh, please come round and pick it up. Well, let me just... Perfect. Exactly. Sunday. See you then. <laughs> and our small flat in London became home to an enormous and deeply, deeply unattractive roll-top desk. It was also a desk that was uniquely unfit for purpose. It was the direct inverse of Doctor Who's TARDIS. It was inexplicably, the inside of the desk was substantially smaller than the outside, and once you'd rolled back the heavy wooden top, there was hardly any space inside to do any work. I tried to convince my wife that it was a classical Indian desk of venerable design and heritage, and that we were extremely fortunate to have it, but she wasn't having any of it at all. And the desk and Prakash therefore became a very regular conversation piece at breakfast. And for a very few happy years, Prakash was very, very much part of our family. Although he was a world-renowned researcher, of course, Prakash was an extremely modest and multi-talented man. He was adored by his students and his in inclusive, for his inclusive supervisory approach. His calm and gentle voice together with his unique and highly personal approach to management, made him a generous and highly effective leader. Away from the office, as we've already heard, he was charming and relaxed and a conversationalist who was welcoming uh, at parties and, and, and other occasions. I have more recently been very lucky to spend some time with Prakash's wonderful family and have learned how much he, he loved them and they totally adored him. In an address at the star, to the staff uh, at the MS Swaminathan Research Foundation, Professor Swaminathan said, Dr. Shetty was an ideal moral teacher. We have much to learn from his humility, his smiling nature, his management values, and his leadership. And I have been very fortunate to learn from Prakash for 25 years, and to claim him as my friend makes me immensely proud.
I came to know Dr. Shetty during the last phase of his uh, professional career when he took charge as uh, CEO of the Lanza Research Program Consortium in late uh, 2012. And uh, as Alan just said, I think his taking uh, becoming the CEO of the program was the best thing that could have happened to the MS Swaminathan Research Foundation, which was the lead of the consortium, and to the performance of the Lanza Consortium itself. I worked as project manager of the Lanza Consortium and got to work very closely with him during this, uh, this period of the last six years till his uh, passing away in September. And uh, personally for me, it's been the most professionally enriching phase of my career. I've learned so much and um, have benefited so much both professionally and personally from the guidance and mentoring that I received. And there's so many aspects that one got to see how he, in terms of both the management skills, in terms of how you negotiate with partners and ensure that there is consensus at the end of it all, everyone is happy, that the research that is undertaken is relevant, that everyone is happy with the resource allocation between partners, and all of it done very subtly and you know, very genuinely, very you know, honestly, and everyone feels that they've got uh, the right deal. And during this phase of uh, you know, the Lanza phase, he often came and spent time in India, stayed at the foundation guest house, and uh, there are so many others of my colleagues who've benefited from the research, uh, you know, from his guidance and advice in his own gentle way. You know, he was very approachable, so even those who are not working on the consortium itself could go and talk and discuss with him, and he would be very open to giving ideas, sharing his uh, thoughts, and also guiding us on the way forward. So one of the studies that uh, we were working on under Lanza is the farming system for uh, nutrition approach, demonstrating feasibility of such an approach. And uh, we, during this phase, we also got support for advocacy, undertaking advocacy of the approach. And the guidance, the very insightful guidance he gave us for you know, going forward in this, in reaching out to policy makers, those were aspects like we really kept, we learned a lot at every stage. And I think uh, it was a, it'd been a very, very beneficial phase for the uh, Swaminathan Research Foundation uh, itself, besides, of course, for me personally. And over the last two years, we've partnered with the Agriculture and Nutrition Health Academy and uh, hosted sessions, Lanza sessions. And yesterday, when we were at the reception in the lawns, I was uh, recalling a similar reception in Kathmandu two years ago when Prakash was here in our midst. And there was so much he still wanted to do in terms of, you know, he was looking forward to a life post uh, Lanza and, you know, a retired life when he would spend time writing and writing about all the photographs that, that he had taken about the, you know, um, depiction of uh, medical conditions in Indian sculptures and so many other ideas. So over this phase of interaction, there were so many stories that he shared and from the professional to the personal, you started looking up to him. He became a friend and guide. He opened his, the doors of his house in London to us like he has to so many others. And it's kind of, he made you feel that he's part of family and we could talk to him about anything. Especially the last uh, 20, 2017, 18, when we were working on the Lancer research synthesis phase, we interacted even more closely, putting together our synthesis strategy and he was, the trust and confidence that he reposed in those who worked with him, that was something amazing. It made you perform even better that you know, he should be happy with the way you deliver. And every year after we submitted our annual report, my colleague Sangeeta, who is research uptake manager and I as project manager, the ne very next day after submission, we would receive a, letter, a mail from him. Dear ladies, thank you so much for the wonderful job. And, you know, it's like making you feel that you, know, that you uh, lived with and interacted with. So when, uh, right from the housekeeping staff in the guest house to the driver, everyone was like, 
such a wonderful man. He's no more. So that, that's how it was. Uh, he saw Lanza through its, the major programmatic phase, and it's un unfortunate that he was not there. He's not there with us when the final output started coming out. And all the consortium partners, we were unanimous that we would dedicate the special issue of uh, the food policy that we brought out, the synthesis of Lanza research, uh, dedicate the issue to him, to our friend and guide, Prakash Shetty. I'm sure he will continue to live with us and inspire the lives of those he touched in many ways for years to come. <laughs>